Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. <clears throat> and today we're going to be doing um, a little bit of a other different video. We're going to be doing how to what, do a more detailed um, FMC program. Because obviously, uh, for some reason, my things went a little bit funny back um, there. So I'm going to do a quick um, FMC tutorial, which is a little bit more detailed than my last one. So I'll just go here. So as I said last time, I'm gonna go to FMC, pause in it, and then put in your reference airport. It's E G H one of the most E G T E, which is Exeter, and we're at gate three. And we'll go route and we'll go E G T E and let's just say I wanna go to E to Alicante. Um, and obviously I have done a, um, a tutorial on how to use Simpri to get a safe route there. So I, that was my, one of my previous videos, so I'd recommend going and watching that. <coughs> and that basically explains how to get a pre-programmed route into your FMC. As I've done there. And then if you go and go to Perth in it. Um, and here, this is where I kind of skipped over. So basically, your ZFW is um, how much weight you're going to be and how much fuel will be automatically programmed up here. So if you just right left click, you'll get it, and you'll see it'll program your um, fuel, which will um, obviously that's how much you need to do the flight with your amount of cargo, and then your reserves. You can basically put any or anything in this. You can put 10 up to something like 2, but I usually put in about 4. Um, and cost index varies from plane to plane. So Ryanair um, has a cost index of 6, um, and other aircraft have a cost index of 45, um, 10, anything between 6 and 45. So I'm in Transylvania. So I'll probably put in about 10, put that in the cost index, and up here this is pretty self the um, 32,000, um, and then you can choose which heading you want your wind to come from, so say I want to come from a heading 100 bracket, uh, and how strong you want the wind, so if I wanted it at uh, 29 knots, at 29, then click it up there, and then your temperature outside minus 3, which is basically calculated. And I did explain the transition altitude pretty well I thought in the last video, so if you're not entirely sure that is, then go check that out. Um, and then obviously you want to hit execute, and one limit, and here as well. So basically, uh, the higher you have your um, D-ray on, the, in real life, the more wear and tear you've got on your engines. So if you're only doing a shorter flight, you would probably go down to something like 22. Whereas if you're doing a longer flight, you'd probably go 26 or maybe 27. Um, so if something like um, Exeter to Spain, you're probably going to need to stick on 26. Whereas if I was doing something like Exeter to um, Inverness or Edinburgh or somewhere, then I'd probably put it down to 22. And obviously your cell date I'll put it on about 45, and I, I just basically wanted to explain the D rates in more detail. And on to takeoff, something else that I didn't really explain too well is um, the higher flap settings you have on, the um, lower your um, uh, takeoff speed will be. Which basically, if you're on a shorter runway like Newton, no, um, X, sorry, I might put a flap to 10 instead of 5, and my um, takeoff speed is slightly um, slower, because obviously it's a shorter runway, and also more flaps means less speed. So if I then want it to put on flaps of 20, and I put that in the box, it's obviously not accepted, because it's too high, and takeoff doesn't go that far. So I think I'm actually probably putting it 10 or 15, but just bear in mind, if you're a shorter runway, you're going to probably want more flaps on. Whereas if it's a longer runway, you'll probably be able to get away with like 5. 
and um, your trim here is or not really up to say, just also has to be calculated, click that in and then calculate your V1, V2 or V3 um, and that's basically it for that page again and uh, I'll just explain a little bit about the arrival so let's just say I've done my whole flight so I've done all of this, loaded my whole route I've gone all the way through um, BHD to my last waypoint which on this flight is it's VLC and I now want to land because obviously I'm not, the runways are going to be at 17,347 feet you want to go to arrivals departures arrivals and just click whichever runway you want to come in so if I was going I'd probably go for runway 10 execute it, you need to do that and you can check your route but it's basically the same and you want to go back to legs um, and the reason why some of your ILS approaches don't work is because you will have to um, see VLC and then you have to move the first of the ILS approach waypoints to the end of the flight plan. So let's just say it's a route discontinu discontinuity. So you want to click it, get it in your scratch box, go back, and put it in the vent place. And now your flight is fully set up um, from all the way up to 18,000, all the way down to 3,000, to go across all the way down to roughly. So you're not just going to be flying, you're not going to get the end of your flight, be at 18,000 feet, and then have to manually land the plane. This will take you all the way down to the um, bottom uh, route. Um, and one thing I'll just explain is go to menus um, and go F6 actions fuel, obviously your fuel should be automatically calculated so I won't mess with that too much and um, payload something else I'll just quickly talk about obviously you don't, if you have all of your full passengers um, that will mess up your program for you if you program your route first so your plane won't take off because you've added an extra I don't know, 20 passengers, your plane won't take off when it says it will. Um, if you change it, so bear that in mind. So if I was to change it to 100 now, which I'll do, put it in, and then go try and take off, um, it won't take off at 153, like I said, because obviously I'm heavier. Um, and obviously, ground connection is pretty self explanatory. Doors is pretty self explanatory too, and pushback. Um, so basically, this is just the really detailed way of getting the pushback. So obviously you can do it in units or feet. So for me, the um, plane never really lines up. So I just leave mine on feet, on feet and put it at zero. Um, and the plane, unless you're on a really big taxi, it won't actually completely line up. Just way you want to get it on as low as possible for me. Turn your nose whichever way you want to go. And obviously you want to go 90 degrees that's how much you want to turn um, left to right and put that into the degrees box and obviously if you click and, uh, start ground, you'll get um, right, obviously the little conversation all set between to go them up here. ground clear to push and start if and you're they'll discretion. start to push back off a couple of minutes and then if in the end you start to push back and the last thing I'll just talk about is the cabin lights Obviously on the ground you'll okay, have it full, down, but if you're on landing, one of them off, that's some um, precaution in flight. So that is basically, I just wanted to re um, go over the more detailed part of the FMC, and you'll just see there, we've just started to be pushed back. Um, but I'd just also like to say, if someone just stop the push back quick. Action. And obviously that will go back to push me to have if I wanted to go back. But um, that's basically it. So I just wanted to do a slightly more detailed tutorial on the FMC. That wasn't the original plan, but um, I did do a Alicante flight. But um, annoyingly at the end, it did um, start to get really laggy. You can see there on the pushback truck. 
I suppose I'd like, go into more detail about the FMCs I learn it, I can tell you guys. You guys can pass it on. But I'd also just like to say thank you to all the recent people who have subscribed. Really help really big thank you for helping to support me. I think I'm going up relatively quickly. I think I'm on 62 or 63 subscribers at the minute. If you're new and you're watching this video, um, there will be better content coming out. Go and check out some of my previous videos if you really want to carry on learning stuff. Um, but just thanks for the support. I'd really appreciate it if you guys could like and subscribe to this video. It would just really help me. Um, and that's basically it for this video. Uh, so thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one uh, some other time this week. So thanks for watching and see you in the next one.